Welcome to lecture four. Uh, in this lecture, we will be talking about the structure of a React application. I will show you how React renders JavaScript into HTML. Also, we will talk about JSX, a templating language used by React. And after that, I will talk about styling. <music> Now it's time to talk about React. Um, we've discussed some, uh, you know, general rules, some ES6. Uh, please review that before like moving to React. But we will discuss React. However, we do not install Node.js yet. We will discuss React in a website that provides us with an environment where Node.js is installed and React works. This website is called Code Sandbox, and if we go to the browser and write Code Sandbox.io, it will give us this window. And here in the left is New Sandbox. We click it, and we see we can build projects with many technologies, like many, many. Uh, one of which is React. Now we open this. On the left here, we have our folder structure, which we can hide and show by, by clicking this paper icon. Here we have a code and we can open any pages that we want in the middle and in the right we have the result of our code for example if i go to up to js and remove the second h2 i will see it in real time that it is removed now this is a react application let's see what we have here first here we have the public the source and package the json of course we will talk about these in a lot of more detail, but now have an idea that package.json is when you create a node application, the node package manager runs your libraries here and scripts. Here we have bubble and TypeScript, but you don't need to worry about this that much for now. We have public and public includes index.html and this is in every React application. Let's just remove some comments to see what we have here and describe it. We see that this is a normal HTML page. We have doc type, HTML, head. Then we have, what is this equal sign? Okay, I guess this is not necessary. We have a title, and if we change the title, it might change. Let's make a React course. Then we have body with no script. It means if JavaScript doesn't work, but that's not important. What's important is here we have this div. This div, it, the idea of this div is root. So remember this div with root ID is the single element in our index.html. In our public HTML, in what people see, we have an index with a single div which is empty but includes root. So where does this come from? Where does HiLocal Sandbox come from if we don't have anything in our public? Well, we go to source. Let's check styles, as you know, could be any style that you want. If we say, for example, background color um, red, then it becomes red like that. So this is just CSS, normal CSS. Index.js is where we select our public HTML. Here we select our public HTML, our working directory. 
so we create don't worry about this we will talk about them much more in their own section but here we create a variable cons root element which is document dot get element by id root what does it mean in javascript you should know that document that get element by id is a dom manipulation that says uh, check the document the html document find the id of root and store it in this variable root element okay now we have the id we store it in root element then react has this react dom have this render method let's just remove these for now and do this to make it simple okay to make it simple react dom is a library as we said as a render method and this is the first use of react dom render method says the first argument is app which is this component we will talk about it render it on root element app on root element so it means anything in this app component will be rendered in our html through this and this is all you need to know about this it is not necessary components in react should have only one function so please don't like you know uh over complicate or don't complicate it just leave it with one functionality have this understanding that uh it's important to make react components like you know with one functionality now let's go to app.js because it's uh, imported into like next uh, imported into index.js and index.js renders it on our public html we see that we have imported styles that means we can do styles from here h1 color white let's see yeah as you see it's white let me check if this is maybe a bit small so so here we have styles then we have a javascript function function app which returns this div and this h1 and it's been exported now we will talk about modules export and import a bit later but for now we see that this h1 through index.js has been like rendered on our public html and this is how react works but what is this we know that we can create functions in javascript like cons of equals to this and then return something but what is this we have never seen like html inside functions or javascript unless we manipulate the dom well this is the importance of react as a library react uses jsx and that's what we will talk about next <music> now let's talk about jsx as i told you a component in react is just a javascript function so we will talk about how to import and export modules named and default but for right now what i want like to focus on is jsx it's pretty much looks like html but what what is it is it really html well if we write like p of paragraph and write school we see it rendered here so it definitely looks like html but it's not html we have jsx is a templating language created by react uh, jsx 
is created to show both dynamic and static content. Now we will explain that. Static content is any HTML that you have, you can write it down in JSX. Of course, there are some limitations that I will talk about. What about dynamic? Let's say instead of this hello, let's say this is a static value, for example, hello visitor. So we have hello visitor, a static value. But what if we have a dynamic value? This is a function with a variable before returning anything called name and we name like the, the variable name stores Frank as a string. What if we want to show this Frank instead of visitor? Well, all we do is two curly braces here and say name. And you see hello Frank. And anytime we change this, we can see it change it here. So we can write dynamic content inside our HTML, which is why JSX is created. And we can write just about any JavaScript. For example, I want to know the result of 25 uh, plus 879, and we have 904 here. So we can write any kind of JavaScript here. Now, there, is, there are some differences. For example, we can't write class here because class, this is JavaScript and class is part of JavaScript. Like you can't write it like that. We have to write class name. For example, we write class name heading and we can easily like, because we have the styles imported and I will talk about that we can easily select that class and change the color for background color to blue. We see it as blue. Let's get back to our app.js. So now we know that we don't have a class, we have a class name. Another difference is if you want to write inline styles, you can't use this. You write style, but you use two curly braces. Say we want this to be bold, for example, or to be best like white. You say color and in string white. Let's see if it works. It worked. Let's say you and then you use a comma let's say you want font weight or size to be 48 pixels you use it in string font weight 48 pixels but if you can see that we don't have font size we don't have something like this inside our jsx we have to remove the dash and write it in camel case that is means the second word is starts with a capital letter. So this is style, inline style, in React. Now, how about if we want to start with an entirely new, like uh, HTML, something like that, you know, to have all of our stuff inside an html don't write it like that why because all of this is like pushed into this page into this div element everything is displayed here we already have html we already have doc type head and header and everything and you can of course touch this if you want but don't try to write like HTML body and other elements here. Now, what if we want to write something else beyond the div, like P paragraph, write name, something like this. Now, it says adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. Did you want a JSX fragment? That only means 
you cannot put adjacent elements in JSX, like adjacent HTML in JSX. It should always be wrapped in one thing. Like if we put a div here and close down the div here, everything works perfectly and we have name. Why? Because it expects one element, React uh, JavaScript functions return one thing and this one thing here is a div. However, we can use fragments. Fragment is this. It doesn't show anything on our HTML, but it still works like we can use any kind of values that we want. So either use div and write everything or use a fragment. Now, there is something else I want to show you. What about if you want an image? Image source like this and alt we say our image and do it like this let's try to find an image of uh, baby yoda we go to images we go to tools usage rights creative common license in order we pick this just to have the source copy image address and get back to our source and put it here it still doesn't work why unterminated jsx content so this is another rule you have to either have this works in html by the way but here you either have to have this image like you know closed down or alternatively you can self-close it inside the tag so please remember that jsx elements have to be closed down now we have our image here so guys i think this is enough for jsx it's a templating language it's very much like html but you can write static and dynamic content you can write stack classes class name and write your classes of course you can write more than one class for example text you style should be written always in two curly braces and always it should be like wrapped in a fragment or a div one also always close down your tags inside like jsx never leave and close tags show this name only if login is true so how do we do that for example we have a username which is called frank kareem and we want to show it only if frank kareem is logged in so how do we do it well not only inside tags and in their attributes we can dynamic content but besides them like here for example just open two curly braces and you can write javascript for example i say i use a ternary operator with this login i say login this means if login is true we studied ternary operator login then show this else just an empty stream so now we say that now we see that login is true and frank karim is shown but what if we make it false what if he logs out then we don't have frank karim so this is all about jsx <laughs>
this is how we write inline style but this is not the best way to write styles in react the best way is to just do class names for example this is a paragraph class now we have this class how we create styles for example we have this app.js we and create anything that we want, any name, but let's name it app.css as it is like uh, the convention. Here we write down normal CSS, for example, paragraph, color, crimson, background color, aqua, something like this. Let's get back to our we see no change. Why? Because our app.css is not imported by app.js. How do we import it? Well, just like we imported styles.css. You write import double or you can use single quotes dot, which means inside this folder and app dot css now the change happened as you see so that easy you can write any kind of css that you want